Howdy, and welcome to Book Your Give Here. We're Travel That Gives. I'm Lulu Lima, your chief travel guru. I hope this episode of Dream Now, Travel Later inspires you to travel, and I invite you to give us the opportunity to help plan your next memorable trip. So grab your popcorn and enjoy. Welcome back, everybody. It's a wonderful day. I'm super excited. And guess what we get to talk about? We get to talk about an amazing part of Florida, Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades. When I was young, we used to always go to Marco Island. So I remember the amazing beaches from a child. My childhood was always full of great places to go. So with that, I'm not going to take more time without introducing my amazing colleague here, Claudia, from the Visitors Bureau. And she really is going to tell you everything, all of the passion pieces. So without further ado, Claudia, take it away. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Like Lulu Lima said, I can't say your first name without your last name. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Claudia Sanfero with the Naples Marco Island Everglades CVB, also known as Florida's Paradise Coast. So welcome everyone. I'm really pleased to be here and let you know everything that we have to offer. And that's awesome. And so there's a lot of new air service um, from you know different parts, not only of, of the Northern region, but also even from here in Texas as well. Um, you know, a, a little, as, as the country keeps going westwardly, you know, there are right. some great spots. So, so as of um, April 21st, we have 51 destinations that fly into RSW, that's our airport, airport code um, by 11 carriers and internationally from Canada um, everything's on hold now as we know they're not able to travel here but some great news um, Lufthansa just announced that they are going to have service um, starting in March 22 um, right into uh, RSW from Frankfurt Airport so we're all excited about that and you can start booking that towards the end of this month and that's super awesome. I love that. So let's talk about, you know, really, I mean, once you get into Fort Myers, because that's the, the airport code for Fort Myers, for those of you guys who don't know, um, Naples, Marco Island, you know, the Everglades is really an easy drive. And if you want to go into Tampa or if you want to go into Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, it's really not that far of a drive. That's correct. So, um, there's obviously more airlift into Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and a lot of, um, especially our international clients, prefer to fly into those airports mm -hmm. and make the easy drive over, stop in the Everglades, maybe do an airboat ride, maybe walk on the many free boardwalks where you can see lots of different birds and, of course, the alligators and manatees as well. Yeah, and that's super awesome. So there's a lot of different um, beach resorts in all the different destinations. And so we're going to start by talking a little bit about Naples. Um, and so let's talk about the beauty of what Naples has to offer. So in Naples, um, we had five beach resorts, and I know you see five here. Um, so starting from the north, working your way south, we have the... Ritz Carlton Beach Resort, which is in the bottom left hand corner. And then, I'm sorry, I have my geography wrong. First, it's La Playa Beach and Golf Resort, which is the one in the top left hand corner. And then that's a boutique hotel. It's a preferred property. Um, they do have some meeting space. It, it's just fabulous. They have a private club. It's right on the beach. Great service. Um, they are one of our virtuoso properties in the destination as well. And then moving on down, the Ritz-Carlton, which is in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, that one is around 500 plus rooms. They're getting ready to renovate, so they're going to have another adult-only tower. Um, so we're really excited about that. And then moving down is the Naples Grand, which is in between the La Playa and the Ritz-Carlton in the pictures here. And that's another 
bigger convention type hotel. Um, you have to take a tram to the beach, but it's a beautiful ride. And once you get down there, it's just amazing. They do have beachside service. There's a restaurant, chairs and umbrellas, everything that you would need to have a fabulous day on the beach. And then um, we have the Edgewater Edgewater Beach Hotel and Golf Club, which is also a boutique property. It's also a preferred property. Um, and they're an all suites hotel. And as you can see, they're right on the beach. You know, just all our beachfront resorts have kids clubs and lots of activities for everything. Um, and the one in the middle with the swimming pool, unfortunately, was closed in May, um, well, May 23rd. And um, they are going under a major transformation and word is that we're going to have a four seasons in 2023. So hopefully that comes true for us. So then that picture is a TBD guys. So we're going to, um, but there's a lot of boutique properties. I'm really excited to hear about that. Um, so you guys are certainly um, without um, any types of accommodations for, pe for all types of people, right? So exactly. you'll always find something um no, nothing to be too worried about um and i went here a little too fast yeah um, we do have some beach resorts on marco island as well yes. um we have um the all sweet all sweets resort which is called the marco beach ocean resort which is this big huge looking resort in the top left hand corner yeah. um they are a condo hotel so not all the rooms are in the pool they only have 80 suites that they rent out to everyone um, and then we have the JW Marco Island Marriott which is just a machine they just added this um, adult only tower um, that has around 80 guest rooms it has a beach club of its own a swimming pool bar and they open this huge entertainment center which they do allow access to the re rest of the resort guests in that one and then we have another boutique hilton which is the swimming pool shot um that's a around 200 guest rooms if you want the more boutique atmosphere then i definitely suggest you go to the hilton or the marco beach ocean resort absolutely and there are plenty of different um other accommodations as well so if you're looking for a house or a villa or something along those lines. Um, all of that is, uh, we can certainly find it. It really just Absolutely. depends on what your budget is. So, but everything, but all types of accommodations are available. Exactly. So, we have boutique resorts, um, these cute little places that are hidden off of Fifth Avenue, like the one in the right hand bottom corner. That's the Hotel Escalante. Those are the rooms just around the pool. It's fabulous. Um, the Inn on Fifth is the only hotel directly on Fifth Avenue where you'll find 36 independently owned restaurants, nightlife, boutiques for shopping. It, it's just something for everyone in the destination. And, and, you, and you certainly have plen plenty of that. So, and you know, one of the things that I remember um, growing up on Marco Island is, is that we would always stay at different villas and we had plenty of, you know, not only um, kitchens and, and space, but we had amazing access to the beach and amazing amenities all the way around. Exactly. Um, if I do want to mention that the Naples Bay Resort has villa type accommodations or like three bedroom That's suites awesome. with a kitchen, um, washer and dryer, everything you could possibly want. They do shuttle you to the beach. It's not that far from the beach. It's right at the start of Fifth Avenue. So it's a fabulous place to visit as well. That is super awesome. And everything is, you know, th there's everything for everybody's price range. So exactly. We do have affordable luxury as well. Um, we have, you know, all the extended stay type hotels that include the Wi-Fi, the parking, mm -hmm. um, breakfast in the morning. And usually they have a cocktail during the week, you know, with wine and some some like hors d'oeuvres to pick at some do have a big barbecue i know the residence in and the hawthorne uh suites both have almost like a full meal for you to eat and that's super awesome but you know guys i'm here for you to help plan all of those moving pieces yes but she is you book with lulu now <laughs> <laughs> So there's so much to do. Um, we're just giving you really a little bit of an adventure of shopping, dining, and of course, playing. And playing is not just on the water, but also, you know, nightlife. 
Exactly. So we do have some nightlife in the area called Mercado. Um, most of the restaurants there do turn into clubs at night where you can dance the night away. Um, the bars do close at two o'clock in the morning here. Um, Fifth Avenue also has live entertainment at night, same, the restaurants turn into nightlife. If you want something a little more quiet, Village um, on Venetian Bay, Bay has beautiful restaurants, as does the Bayfront Inn, which is also just at the foot of Fifth Avenue. And of course, if you're shop here to shop luxury, then I re definitely recommend you go to the Waterside Shops. Yeah, absolutely. So truly, a little bit of everything for everybody. Exactly. Okay. And so there's also, um, you know, the Marco Walk Plaza um, and in the old Marco Island. Yes, um, the shops in old Marco are more on the 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 um, past the canal area, mm -hmm. um, and they have beautiful, cute little boutiques and restaurants there. There's not that many but it's so cute to go walk around the snook inn which is one of the local favorites is right next to it so you can shop till you drop and then go sit on the water and have a cocktail and you know some hors d'oeuvres or dinner yeah and that's super awesome and also you're going to find in a lot of these um, places to shop lots of local artisans so it's not just all brand names and so, and that's important because you're also supporting the local economies when you're shopping there. Absolutely. So let's talk about um, your next slide here, which is the Isles of the Capri Marina. So this is on your way to Marco from Naples. It's a little island right before you get to Marco. And it has this fabulous restaurant called the Island Gypsy. And you can also rent boats and kayaks from that area, but it's a local favorite favorite my my fiance or wishful thinking my boyfriend and I <laughs> go down by boat all the time and it's a great place to people watch and walk around and their store is fabulous I buy so much stuff in that store of theirs and and for those of you guys who didn't get the hint um she did her Freud and slit because it's coming we're putting it out into the universe <laughs> so you guys oh my god you would die place for um here for, for, uh, for proposals this would be a great place because this came from her heart so <laughs> here funny. we go we're, we're putting it out there all right so now let's talk about goodland so goodland is right next to marco island if you go on the back side of marco island off of 41 mm -hmm. it's this cute little fishing village that also has these um restaurants that are right on the water like stands and the pelican and the little bar which are typically only open during season but we're having a great season so i'm not sure if they're still open or not um we've basically surpassed 2019 numbers as of april this year so we're really excited awesome. about that I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, everybody being um, cooped up for so long in 2020 that the season is just extending. And so even though summer tends to be your lower season, you have so many people who haven't gone out yet who are going, you know what, I'm going anywhere. And, Absolutely. Um, or they don't want to go home because their states are still shut down. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So so here's a great opportunity where um, you can truly enjoy uh, you know, a, a, even though it's a little warmer, you know, they're, I think the locals are, are super happy that they're, they've got income coming in, they're making up for lost revenue from last year. And, and, and so this is a great way to support um, the local economy. Exactly. So the beauty about Florida is, is that you've got not only the Atlantic, but you've got the Gulf. And, and this part of the world, um, and, and what we're talking about, they've got so many great things on the Gulf because that's where we are. So let's talk about those. Oh my gosh, there's so much to do on the water. Um, on Marco Island, there's Marco Island water sports. They'll take you parasailing. You can rent paddle boards. Um, in Naples, we have this crazy jet boat, Odin, that'll like take you in the bay and spin you around. It's fantastic. And then I forget what these little two like airboat looking things are, but you take those off of Goodland and then take you back and through the 10,000 islands. And you can see all the fabulous nature that 
10,000 islands has to offer. It's just amazing. And, and, and so for those of you guys who are really, you know, looking for that live dolphin experience, having them free and, um, and out and about, this is where you're going to find them. Exactly. There's no, there's no captivity here. <laughs> Not so, whatsoever. Yeah, so so here's another um, an opportunity so that you guys can see some some more of the things that um, Claudia was talking about. So you guys really have lots of water sports. I think they're called Craig Cats. If you want to check those out, they're really cute. Awesome. So and now here's you know some some of the opportunities where you can have a little bit of um, dining or yacht kind of experience or. Um, or you can go on the Black Pearl. Yes, so the Black Pearl just runs through us, uh, what we call season, so which is January through the end of Easter. Um, and it's at, on Marco Island. You can go out for an afternoon trip or a sunset cruise. Um, we also have the princesses, one on Marco Island and one in Naples. They do also a lunch tour and a dinner tour. The dinner sunset cruise is amazing. Um, and there's so many other options. There's a double sunshine. You can take the dolphin explorer and they always find dolphins because they actually study them. There's a scientist that, you know, tracks them and it's, it's a fabulous trip for the children. That is awesome. And so, and so let's talk a little bit about getting around because I, I've seen, you know, some great opportunities here where um, in within the Naples area that there's um, some car services that are, you know, you can kind of just hop on, hop off kind of thing, or um, yeah. you can just have, have something that's complimentary to you. How does that work? So we have this slider service and it's, they, there's a phone number that you call and they come and pick you up anywhere in this map mapped area which is m mostly the downtown area and it's mm -hmm. gratuity based so if you have two dollars you give them two dollars whatever you feel like giving them they'll accept it's a fabulous way to see the downtown area go to the pier go to fifth avenue go to third street it's amazing we're we're very lucky to have that service here yeah and that's awesome and if you don't like that, you can always do the water shuttle or you can do Lyft or Uber. Exactly. The, the Well, there's the water shuttle that takes you to the different restaurants in Naples. And then mm -hmm. the, there's the Hemingway water shuttle that takes you out to a barrier island called Key Waden Island. That's typically where the locals go. So they'll take so you in the morning. I have a tip here, guys. This is yeah. where the locals go. If you didn't hear that, I'm re-emphasizing that. Want to be with like the locals? You take the Hemingway water shuttle. You take the Hemingway, you have to take everything, your coolers, your beach chairs, everything, and spend the day out there. There is a hamburger boat that goes out there every day. There's an ice cream boat. So you, there is some food out there, but there are no facilities. So beware of that. So that's all good. That's how you keep it local. <laughs> exactly. So, and, and so here's just a little recap of all the different places where um, they can take you and, and all of that um, for the Marco Island side of things. Yes, so that's the transportation that we have on Marco Island, should you need transportation. Um, I will let you know that it used to be a taxi was only $5 anywhere you went on the island. I'm sure Uber now is a lot less than that is. So that's a great way to get around on the island. So there you go. So now let's talk about the Cat Beach Bus. So this is a service we implemented a few years back where um, the locals and visitors alike can take this free service. It's in the North Naples area and it takes you to um, a park called Delanor Wiggins Pass and which okay. has a beautiful beach. You can go fishing there. There's services there. It's fantastic. Or Vanderbilt Beach. It's, it's a great way. You can take your bicycle, put it on the front, and you can bike around. It's it's a great oh, awesome. free service to everyone. That is super awesome. And if you don't want to do that, there's plenty of things that you can do where you can um, rent, you know, a, a, a buggy kind of thing or for the entire family, like a little golf cart. Um, you can do a Segway tour. You can go on a bike tour. I mean, there's I recommend 
that you take the trike tour, which is this electric tricycle that you see here. And they do the, yeah. a fabulous job. They take you to all the um, sightseeing places in the downtown area. Um, and it's fun. They make it a lot of fun. But if you don't want to do that, you want to go on your own, I definitely recommend you get a golf cart anywhere you can go 35 or under. Um, you can take your golf cart. It acts like a car um, or a moke. Now we have mokes or mokies as someone call them. They look like little Jeeps. Mm -hmm. Same thing, 25 and or 35 and under, you can take them on the street. Um, these slingshots are amazing. It's funny to see them driving around town. People love them. So definitely try those out um, if you want to take a tour on your own. Twizzies in Bermuda. Pardon? They remind me a little bit of the Twizzies in Bermuda. The Twizzies are um, like... The, the slingshot does? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Twizzy is just co completely covered, whereas the slingshot isn't. Um, oh. But yeah, but it, it, it's super, super cool. So definitely an experience you guys have to have. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so let's talk about the places to see, cause we told you where you can stay and how you're going to get around. So now oh let's gosh. talk about where you're going to go. There are so many places to see. Um, of course you have to go to the historic Naples pier. Um, also there's tons of boardwalks. There's the corkscrew swamp sanctuary. Um, there's the Gordon river greenway where you can take your bicycle and bicycle. I forget how long it is, but it's just out in nature. It's beauty, beauty. Go see the sunset. Even the sunrise is beautiful here. Yeah, of course. And, and the beautiful thing is, you know, you've got the East, you really do have an opportunity where East meets West. We do. Absolutely. So, um, so, so some great other pictures of, you know, what you can enjoy, um, the type of lifestyle that you can enjoy. Um, and so definitely something you should do. Now, for those of you guys who love to bird watch. Yes, this bird garden just opened up. I haven't been to it yet, but it, it looks fantastic. Um, we have been trying to get out there. It's just, you know, we've, we're busier than ever now, you know, of with course. Zoom and it, it I'm so glad business is back for our destination because we are just so proud of that. Um, for children, we have the Children's Museum of Naples, the one that you see come on there. Um, and kids can go learn how to be, I don't know, an environmentalist or a fishing person. And they have like different activities that where you learn at the same time for the children. Of course, we have the Naples Zoo and the Naples Botanical Garden, which also has a, a children's garden, which they will absolutely love. Of course, there's the pup pot, there's water slides, there's we have everything for families here. You do. It's very family oriented and there's even game centrals. So where you can go and you can play lots of, um, you know, ar arcade games and, and everything else from our generation. Right. So I was meant, I mentioned earlier that the JW had that big game area. It's called um, 10, I think it's called 10 K alley. They have video games, a bowling area. It, <laughs> it just is amazing. And then of course, what city wouldn't be complete with a Chuck E. Cheese. Yes, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. and you know, it is a family friendly place. So, um, so definitely we can do that. But yeah, before we get families, we have to have a little bit of romance. So this destination really allows for that. And I love that we can, you know, find ways where we can have a romantic dinner on the beach. Um, and, and, and all those kind of uh, moving pieces. Right. So, um, there, the, the beachfront resorts do have dining directly on the beach. It's it's amazing. It's an amazing amazing thing to experience. But we also have these very cute romantic restaurants. We have a lot of independently owned restaurants, so you're not going to find them anywhere else. Every That's restaurant so here in Naples has its own unique flavor, and they are all amazing. You can't go wrong with whichever one you pick. Yeah, and that and that's super awesome. So if you guys love seafood, if you guys love steak, if you guys are vegetarian, um, whatever it is that you um, that your heart goes out for, there are so many different boutique restaurants for that. Absolutely. So, 
And of course, we go back to, you know, the family piece of things because it is a family destination as well. So, Mm -hmm. and there's plenty of places where the family can also enjoy that doesn't have to be fast food. Exactly. We have Brooks Burgers, which is um, known nationally. It was voted number one burger place on TripAdvisor. So definitely check out um, Brooks Burgers. But we have fabulous um, waterfront areas like Pinchers and Riverwalk and the dock at Creighton Cove. Um, So they're more rustic and, you know, you don't have to be all dressed up and worry that your kids are going to run around. Mm -hmm. Um, And also our Mexican restaurants are a lot of fun, especially um, Rocco's Tacos there. Absolutely. Definitely um, experience. And of course, you guys have plenty of Italian. Uh, Yeah. What (laughs) name does not have Italian? Um, One of my favorites is the Bravo, which is in the Mercado area. Um, But we also have um, an area called Celebration Park that has food trucks. I forget how many food trucks they have, but they have kids games, entertainment every night. And you can go there by boat or by car. It's fabulous in this new area called the Bayshore Arts District. And it's an up and coming area. So I definitely recommend you check that out. So look at that, guys news right off the bat (laughs) up and coming areas exactly so so let's talk a little bit about um the culture the history i mean the arts so naples does have a lot of that as well so it's not like hi we're just beach and food we actually have a lot of different um you know local culture and history that we can actually learn Exactly. And you can definitely learn about the history of Collier County at any one of our five Collier County museums, all of which are free. Anyone can go. It's a great way to learn about the Calusa Indians. I see you went to the next slide. The Calusa yeah. Indians, they were the first people that inhabited the area. Um, there's the Everglades Museum that will tell you about how it was founded. Um, we have I forget, um, there's uh, one museum, okay, so the Everglades, there's the Naples Depot, which is a fantastic museum, right, it's uh, so close to Fifth Avenue, it's at the foot of Fifth Avenue, so definitely check out our free, free museums, and of course, the Marco Island Museum has the legendary um, Marco, Marco Cat that is on loan by the Smithsonian, and it has just been extended for another year, so definitely oh, wow. check that out. How awesome is that? Mm-hmm. So, and on top of that, you also have lots of um, areas where you have, uh, you can see by the green signs and things like that, that you have landmarks. We and- do. So the, the one you're seeing here is the historic Palm Cottage. And there is actually a Naples historic walking tour in the downtown area that's very close to the fifth or sorry to the naples pier so i definitely recommend you check that out it's very interesting and that's awesome and so and you also have an opportunity to tour with locals so here's you know one of the local guides um especially if you like you know to to enjoy lots of mysteries yes so this this is on marco island it's the marco mystery historic tour and let me tell you, she scares me. <laughs> we were at the Old Marco Inn and Suites, which is another condo hotel on Marco Island that's not on the beach, but it's a fabulous place right next to the Snook Inn. And I went in there with my assistant and I was like hiding behind her because she scared me so much. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> so for those of you guys who like a little horror story, we'll definitely hook you up with her. Exactly. Oh, and- And of course, I mean, you can't go, you you go back in time and everything else and you've got amazing cars. Um, So history, cars and everything else in between, right? Right. So this is very close to our office, actually. It's called the Revs Museum and it houses one of the world's most prestigious car collections in history. So there are. Hours are very limited, so check out their website before you come. If you're really a car buff and want to go see it, I would plan my vacation around their openings. That That is super awesome. And so for those of you guys who really love theater, we can actually get you some theater tickets to enjoy live theater. 
So absolutely. Now that the theaters are open, you know, with all the safety protocols, yeah. Um, we have Broadway tour, um, tours that come from Broadway. We have the artist Naples. Um, theater zones. We have people that perform on the streets every Thursday um, evening. They're musicians, not just theater. Um, yep. And then, of course, we have the Gulf Shore Playhouse and the Marco Players Theater on Marco Island. So we do have quite a bit of culture and arts in the destination. And that is, that's super awesome. And so here's just some great pictures for you guys to peruse and see, you know, about the different um, art pieces in terms of the art league as well as the um, the museums yeah so the the one on the left is in that historic art or not the historic the Bayshore Arts District that's up and coming mm -hmm. so it, it's very cute and the other one is is Naples Museum Baker Museum which is close to the waterside shops and their collections change seasonally so I would definitely check them out very, very interesting so now, it wouldn't be Florida if we didn't talk about golf. Well, we were voted the number one golf destination by the International Golf Tour Operators Association. Um, it was a while back in 2014, but we're, we're still proud of it. Um, yes, we have a few it. golf resorts. The, the first one that you see there, the Naples Beach Hotel and Golf Club, is the one that just recently closed. So we're waiting for our Four Seasons golf course to open up in 2023. Um, we have Green Links, which is open to the public. Um, Tiburon does have some public play, or, or you know, if you stay there, obviously you get to play. The JW Marriott also has their own golf course. The La Playa is one of the most beautiful golf courses that you could play here. There is no outside play, so either you're a member or you have, you stay at the hotel. And then same with the Naples Grand um, Golf Course. Either you stay there or um, you're a member. So super awesome. So, and of but course, we do have some public golf courses available if you are not staying on property. Yeah, and but there's there's plenty of things for everybody to do. And and you never know who you're gonna run into. <laughs> right. So on that note, let's take a look at the Everglades, which is a UNESCO a World Heritage Site. Oh, it's one of my favorite places. Um, it's very peaceful when you go out there. Um, even while you're walking in the swamp, you don't hear anything except your feet treading through the water. It, it is amazing. Of course, you go with a guide who knows exactly where to go mm -hmm. so you don't run into alligators, but I definitely recommend it. I did it the first year I worked here and I just love it. Um, a lot of our German and UK customers love to do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. Who doesn't? This is so... Uh, There's so, only so one cool. Everglades in the whole world, so definitely try it out. Yeah. So, and in the Everglades, you can go kayaking. Yes, um, Everglades Area Tours does um, very good tours of the Everglades and kayak or canoes. This is a boat-assisted kayak tour, so they'll take you out into the islands, and then they'll take you take the kayaks out and then you kayak through the mangroves it, it's an amazing way to see the 10,000 islands talk, talk about an experience this is definitely a transformational one mm -hmm. and while you're out there look at look at what you're going to experience look at nature Right, so we're the Western Gateway to the Everglades, which is the saltwater portion. So you're gonna mm -hmm. see dolphins and manatees and sea turtles. Um, you can collect shells on all those islands, the barrier islands, it's just amazing. And that is so cool. And so, and then if you just wanna just dip in the water and you know, put your canoe oh, or yeah. your water up there, totally, it, it's totally game. It, exactly. And then you want to go bird watching? Yes. Here, so here's another again, Everglades mm -hmm. Area Tours does bird watching tours. And they'll tell you about the roseate spoonbill and all the different birds that we have in the destination. When I do my presentations in Latin America, I call the red roseate spoonbill our flamingo here in <laughs> Naples, Marco Island and the Everglades. Because they get That's pink when they shrimp like flamingos rich. do. Yeah. And for those of you guys who are uh, flamingo aficionados, here you go. 
exactly. So, um, and there's a lot of fishing that you can do as well. So if you wanted to do a charter fishing boat or something along those lines, we absolutely can help you do that. So uh, again, there's no lack of activity. Right. In this you can area. go deep sea fishing for half a day overnight, if you would like, or backwater fishing in the Everglades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So su super fun stuff. I mean, doesn't this stuff make you want to be like, hey, I want to go out in nature. I want to go do this. I want to try that. Exactly. And who doesn't want to be out in nature now that we've been cooped up for a whole year? Exactly. So, so here's a great way. I mean, great, you know, girlfriend, guys, get away, hanging out on the beach, um, or even if it's just your families, and you can and you can glamp or camp. Yes, um, you can there. actually go camping in the national park. Um, you can go for overnight, a week. Um, guide. There are guides that will take you out, or you can go on your own. You just have to check in and get your um, your license to go, kind of thing so amazing so so here's just a quick synopsis of all the things that you um that we just talked about and things that you can experience exactly fishing camping glamping um this is a cheeky hut that you can sleep in it's beautiful it's out in the everglades obviously and the breeze runs through it it is so nice and peaceful in there i definitely recommend it I think, you know, for you guys who are nature lovers um, and want to do something a little romantic and off the beaten path, that would be a great way to go. Mm -hmm. So, and again, just some really enjoying the Everglades and, and getting to see what is out there. Right. So this is a pole boat. I, I don't know if anybody's been on one of those. I have yet to do it, but he is... I don't know how many ge generations been living in the Everglades and he knows everything there is to know about the Everglades. So if you have a chance to go on this pole boat tour, I definitely recommend it. That is awesome. I love learning from the locals. Me too. So, and, and so, and, and there's even live gator shows where, you know, you can truly enjoy. Um, yes. So what we had, sorry. No, I was going to say, these guys live there. I mean, they are they really know the, the, the animals and, and, and everything else, no? Absolutely. So, again, they're fourth or fifth generation um, born there. Uh, this is an alligator show that's done at the Wootens, where you can also do an airboat tour or a swamp buggy tour. They have a little animal sanctuary. It's a great another great place for the children to go and visit and experience nature. That is so amazing. I love that. I mean, there's just so much for everybody. And you want an airboat? You got one right here. Another airboat tour. Um, this is a more in-depth airport airboat tour. Tongue twister there for me. Um, mm -hmm. So they, this is more of an educational tour. It's one or two hours and they go into the fresh water and deep into the covered cypress domes. That, that is super awesome. And so here you have some, you know, some amazing architecture, historical buildings. Mm -hmm. So these are points of interest in the Everglades. We have yep. the, small, the smallest um, post office in the United States. And it's That's in so between awesome. Miami and um, Naples, Marco Island, or sorry, on your way to the Everglades. Um, then, then we have the Smallwood store, was it, which was actually an actual store back in the day. It's now a museum where you can see all their the things that you, they used to have back then. Um, and then we have the Big Cypress Gallery, which is a Clyde Butcher gallery. And he does black and white photography of the Everglades, where he makes the clouds look like they're the mountains in Florida. It, it's just amazing. That is so awesome. And again, you know, here's some more opportunities so you can see what other retailers there are um, and, and enjoy a little bit of gastronomy. Yes, so this is the places where you can eat in Everglades City, so the Havana Cafe. Some of these do close in the off season, um, so I definitely recommend you call before you go uh, and see what is open. There's the um, Camellia Street Grill, the Havana 
cafe like I mentioned seafood in the island cafe which is the one on the bottom left hand corner yeah. great place and to just, as we plan your itineraries those are things that I will be doing for you to making sure that you know you know what's open and things like that so we'll have those conversations absolutely and so you know the the entire area has um, a great pledge to make sure that everything stays safe and yeah, so as most destinations important. do you know everyone follows the safety protocols put in place by the cdc and you know the social distancing and that thing that sort of thing but lulu will have all that information for you as she's going to do all the research for you yeah, absolutely. And I'm so excited to be able to um, to offer all of the all of these moving pieces. Absolutely. So, and if um, any questions guess, you have, you can definitely reach out to me and ask me anything that you need. Yes, of course. Don't worry. Anything that questions that come up from all the clients and all the followers, I'll be reaching out. Absolutely. So, um, I really appreciate your time and I'm so excited that you got a chance to talk about this amazing area. Um, so Naples, the Everglades, Marco Island, place to not miss. So is there anything you'd like to add before we close up today? Don't tell anyone what I said about my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I think the cat's out of the bag now, it's honey. It's a secret. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, really. <laughs> no, but definitely come to the Paradise Coast. It truly is a unique place. And Lulu will help you book your next great vacation in the destination. So, and I'm super excited. So thank you so much, Claudia, for being with us. Thanks, and Lulu. Namaste. Until the next time. Namaste. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.